That's right, I'm back from Las Vegas. And guess what else is back? Adam Adamant lives. Join Bob and me for two episodes of this wonderful British thriller. No, not like that. She was a lovely girl, Bob. I don't know why she asked if I had a second eye patch, though. Maybe I'll get the first one back some point. Oh, hi there. Welcome back to Creature Features, now in its 16th year. I, of course, am your host, Al Omega, the Alpha and Omega of all things science fiction and horror. Bob and I were just talking about my recent trip to Las Vegas, where I appeared in a feature film with some lovely actors, which you will have to wait about, at least till the movie comes out, for me to tell you more. If we're lucky, I'll get to have the trailer here. Now, as for tonight's show, we have another couple of episodes of Adam Adamant Lives. Maybe you can find where my suit went. (laughs) These are always lots of fun, and I love the Shirley Bassey-esque intros they do for them. So let's get into our first episode and the who's what's its of it. Our first episode is Black Echo which was directed by Maria Armstrong. And this was the sixth thing she ever directed. Uh, But some of her earlier works went out to do things like The Shadow of the Tower, The Girl of Slender Means, and in 2007, she did Miss Marple. She's originally from Chris Perthshire in Scotland. This was written by Donald Ford, and he wrote for things like a Study in Terror, and The Legend of the Spider Forest, and Hellboats. He's originally from Fulham, London, England, and he left the building in 91. Now, he left the entertainment industry and became a magistrate in London, which is kind of like a justice of the peace here in America. It's important that uh, he is also the brother of Derek Ford, And I bring that up because Derek Ford also wrote for this, and he wrote for things like The Casting Couch, and Don't Open Till Christmas, and The Urge to Kill, which could all be one movie if you squish it together real hard. Now, he left the building in 95, and he comes to us by way of Essex, England. Now, he and his brother started off in radio, Uh, He's also known for working on a number of very um, flamboyant and sexy films, we'll call it that, in the late 60s and into the 70s. He then left film to become a writer of books. Now, of course, this is also co-written by Dick Vosberg, who wrote for things like Planet Patrol and Ronnie Corbett in Bed and We Have Ways of Making You Laugh. He comes to us from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Uh, Fooled you there for a second. Thought I was going to say England. Uh, He left the building in 2007. And he's been nominated for two Tony Awards and wrote obits for the British newspaper The Independent. A comedian writing obits. This should be fun. I suppose you could say his big claim to fame is that when they brought Gunsmoke to the United Kingdom... He's the one that did the voice double for James Arness's character. Of course, they also changed the name of it to Gun Law as well. And and considering how few guns are in England, it must have seemed very rugged. Now, as in all our shows, 
with Adam Adamant. He is played by Gerald Harper. And he's been in things like The League of Gentlemen and The Lady Vanishes and the TV series Thriller, which we've done. He comes to us from London, England. What a surprise. And he's received the Actor of the Year Award in the TV Times in 1969. In the part of Georgina Jones, we have Julie Harmer. And she was in things like Department S and The Avengers, the, the one without Captain America, and the TV series Slim John. Now, I want to take a second here to point out that if anyone has either that on a DVD or just a digital file or, you know, where I can get a copy of it somehow, please let me know. I'd love to find that. Now, she comes to us from St. Albans, Hertfordshire, England. And I suppose the thing we all really want to know is, in The Avengers, did she ever have to square off against Diana Rigg? Yes, she did. And Diana Rigg won. Someday I'll find a copy of that cat fight. There's a picture of that for my screensaver. <laughs> now, in the part of Sims, our gentleman's gentleman, we have Jack May, who sadly left the building in 97. And he was in things like The Man Who Would Be King. It's an excellent movie. And he's also in Jeeves and Wooster. And he's also lent his voice to things like Count Dracula and Muzzy in Gondoland. Now, as I said, he left the building in 97, but he came to us originally from Henley-on-Thames, Oxfordshire, England. Now, he is a veteran serving in India during World War II. Now, since Mother loves Lord of the Rings so much, I kind of have to point out that he was in the 1984 movie The Bounty, which also had Bernard Hill. And both he and Hill both played Theoden in different productions of Lord of the Rings which sort of makes sense. If they played the same character in the same production, it would get confusing. The Face, what a name, is played by Peter Ducro. And uh, he left the building in 76, but he was in episodes of Doctor Who, because, of course, he's English, and anyone who's English is in Doctor Who eventually. He was also in Sergeant Cork, and A is for Andromeda, Another series I'd love to get a hold of a copy of. Now, he comes to us from Hampstead, London, England. I guess evil runs in his veins. Runs! As he was a DJ at a pirate radio station called Radio Atlantis. A few of you may have heard of that one. Now, with that, let's get into our episodes. Tonight, it's Black Echo. Bob, isn't there a Lovecraft story about some guy prolonging his life using extreme cold?
Helms, it's downright uncanny, quite. Credit the beard, please, Bob the first. We're in checking all the supporting evidence, sir. They're quite sure it is. Only that saw. It's incredible. I mean, one heard the legend, which I always discounted. But a team large as life and a group photograph taken in Leningrad in... St. The... Petersburg. Yes, quite, 1901. Well, it brings it home to you. It really brings it home. He hasn't aged today. 1901. Well, it just goes to show what a block of ice can do for you. Uh, you'll notice the Grand Duchess Thorikov. Oh, she's aged a bit, hasn't she? <laughs> If indeed the present lady is the Grand Duchess Vorikoff. Mr. Adamant's unique life history makes him an especially valuable witness. <laughs> he wouldn't know the Grand Duchess from Adam. <laughs> what? Oh, no, never mind. Shall I ask Mr. Adamant in, Mr. Henry? Yes. He should be a rather interesting fellow. Mr. Adamant? Mr. Adamant? Mr. Henry? Mr. George? Oh, I'm glad you could come, Adam. Your first visit to the bank? To this present building, yes. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, changed a bit since your day. Well, everything has changed, Sir Henry. Yes, I suppose it has, when you come to think of it. For the better and for the worse. Yes, I myself can never reconcile myself to the total disappearance of the golden sovereign. Ah, now that's something, Adam, and tree. It's all a question of gold reserves. Very tricky. Now, look here, Henry. The present business is complicated enough. Complicated? There's nothing complicated about it. The woman is a fraud, an imposter. You can't be certain of that, Sir Henry. Now, look, if Mr. Adamant would kindly take a chair and uh, have a look at these photographs, will you? Yes, you appear to be in some of them. Really? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Most enjoyable summer. But you... Do you remember that year and when the photographs were taken? Yes, quite clearly. St. Petersburg, the summer of 1901. Oh, 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 you can't be that, sir. I mean, it's 60 years ago. The year before last, sir, is very clear in my mind. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, <coughs> I'm forgetting. Well, they are quite remarkable, aren't they? Yes, the photographer was a Frenchman. I remember he had a little, little bit. No, no, it's the contents that are remarkable. Mm -hmm. You spotted something? Yes. Yes, it's a... Lady, I once knew. Well, it's this lady we are interested in. That's the Grand Duchess Farrakhan. You knew her then? Well, I should. She was my hostess. Do you think you'd know her again? What if we were to meet, you mean? Yes, just that. Well, she was in direct line of succession. Remote, but direct. But I understood the Romanovs perished in 1918. Exactly. Exactly. And we are now faced with a lady claiming to be the Grand Duchess Farrakhan. But how does this concern the Bank of England? But money, my dear chap. The Vodafone has money deposited with us. And that's what she's after. The first claim was made three years ago. We've been all this time investigating the claim. And I gather you have been unable to refute the lady. Yes, she's too clever for that. Or perhaps telling the truth. <laughs> she can't say it. Why not? <laughs> too much money involved, that's why not. I think I should make the bank's position clear, Mr. Adams. We've no wish to break faith. But the abrupt conversion of such a sum from sterling into any other currency Could. would bring about diplomatic and fiscal upheavals which we cannot ignore. You mean the Grand Duchess does not live in England? Oh, she has been living in Surrey, but uh, we gather that she intends to remove herself and her fortune, if she can get it, to Switzerland. At the age of 87, I ask you. <laughs> she was always a lady of spirit. She's not the first one to try it on. I say, do you remember that dancer from the Folly Bergier in 39? Oh, really, Henry, will you stick to the point? Now, Mr. Adamant, Mr. Adamant, what we want you to do is to meet this lady, and from your personal knowledge, just give us your opinion. I'm afraid, sir, I don't see myself in the role of Judas. Judas? What the devil does that mean? It means that I can't help you, sir. It's quite obvious that you've been unable to destroy the bona fides of this lady, and I am your last desperate throw to avoid meeting your obligations. Adamant, remember where you are. I remember very clearly, sir, and I cannot help you. Why not? Time, Sir George, time. Nature has no doubt taken its course these 60-odd years. But you said it was the summer before last. Yes, but not for her, sir. Have you no sensibility? She is a very old lady. If she is indeed the Grand Duchess, this meeting would be most painful for her. Well, that can easily be arranged. We'll arrange it so that you saw her, but she didn't see you. I don't think I could skulk, sir, not even for the Bank of England. Perhaps Mr. Adamant would look at this better. My portrait, sir. A comparative composite. The Grand Duchess as she was and the present claimant. A glass, quickly, a glass. Ah, a present what? magnifying power. Have you spotted something? The Duchess is wearing a brooch. Well, I'm sure they had significance. When was this portrait taken? We've had it about a year. Was it taken in England? My year. Gentlemen? 
I agree to meet the Grand Duchess. Will you kindly make all possible arrangements? At once. But what has made you change your mind, Dennis? These photographs. I may keep them? Yes, yes, of course. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. gentlemen. Thank you. I shall await your call. Good day to you. Oh, there is one other thing. What is the extent of the Varakov fortune? One hundred and fifty million. Ah, Sterling. It's a respectable sum. Respectable. Amusing yourself? I'm just bored to death. What are you doing, Sim? I am improving my talents. <laughs> which? I'm trying to decide which is the best way to win this contest. Oh, what's the prize? Two tickets in a row. Oh, For the best limerick, Sim. Oh, no. Now, what do you think of this? <laughs> there was a young woman of Corfu who set out to Tibet for a hairdo. One night for a pasha went farther and farther. Her virtue was Purdue in Urdu. What do you think of that? Ghastly. I thought it had a special quality in my soul. Oh, well, where is Adam then? Mr. Adamant has been summoned to the Bank of England. Oh, don't tell me he's got overdraft trouble. I was not confided in. Ah, now that should be Mr. Adamant. Now, <clears throat> I should make myself scarce by you. I'm more than scarce. I'm unique. <laughs> Ah, Any messages? No, sir. This is Jones is here. Ah, yes. Well, I'm expecting a call from the Bank of England, Sims. And would you look out my bound copies of the Illustrated London News? I think you'll find them in the bedroom. Yes, sir. Any particular one? Yes, what? yes. The summer of 1901, Ascot Week ah. in particular. Hi, Mr. Adamant. I hear you've been to the bank. Oh, dear Miss Jones, would you care for a cup of tea before you leave? Yes, thanks. I wouldn't mind a Coke, sir. A Coke, sir? Is that a beverage? The Illustrated London News. Ah, uh, thank you, Sim. Miss Jones would care for a Coke, though. Do we have such a thing? A Coke. Ice cold Coke. A beverage, a young lady from Stoke, whose request for freezing cold Coke was met with derision at a point of decision that she... Yes. Yep. Save my magnifying glass. Ah. What is it? That's amazing. Absolutely what? amazing. Look at that, Sim. Look at that. What are you looking at? A picture. I can see that. Uh, is there something of significance, sir, connecting the two portraits? Yes, there is indeed, Sims. There is indeed. Compare the brooch that is being worn by those two ladies. Are they the same design? No, they're the same brooch. Singular. Only one of them was ever made. Oh, go on. How can you be sure? Because that lady said so when presenting it as a gift to that lady. Who is that old lady? That's the Grand Duchess Farrakhan. Oh, she looks it. And this lady, sir? That's Louise. You're Louise? Uh, but surely, sir, uh, this portrait is the more recent of the two. It was taken last year, is it? Well, I don't understand. Neither do I. But surely, sir, if Miss Louise was given the brooch as a present by the Grand Duchess before 1901, how does the Grand Duchess come to wearing it last year? That is the question, Sims. That is the question. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Adamant's residence? Oh, yes, one moment. Uh, Mr. Beard, sir, from the Bank of England. Would you take a message? Sir, I am instructed to take a message. Ah. Uh, uh, mm. Thank you, sir. Sir, they are... Thank you, Sims. Thank you. Perhaps there were two brooches. No, monsieur. But then, sir, the two ladies must have been in touch. Yes, there is some connection. Sims, you may confirm that I will keep this from you. If you'll excuse me, I have some reading to do. elevation rising high in the sky called bye bye promise
believe that I am a specialist. If you are a representative of the newspaper, sir, then I'm instructed to inform you that Madame Arena is not at home. No, I'm not a journalist. You are Oisin or Chair, the Gavarin, Konika Galagani Gavorokov. I beg your pardon, sir. One moment, if you please. This way, if you please, sir. Thank you. You are startled, Mr. Adamant. Forgive me for a moment. I know. I look so much like my grandmother when she were younger. You're not the first to have thought so. Your grandmother? I'm Irena Rumova Natashkin. I'm delighted to meet you, but surely a grand duchess in your own right. Oh, plain Irena, if you don't mind. I think the maintenance of dead titles rather silly. But not the claim to their fortune. There is a distinction. <laughs> there is indeed, yes. It is I who should be startled. We have heard of your amazing experience, but you look incredibly well... Well preserved. Oh, I hope I don't offend you. Not at all, madam. Not at all. You know, there is such a feeling of Russia in this room. That stove, for instance, it's so beautiful, isn't it? And so reminiscent of so many things. My grandmother had them installed throughout the house. She favoured them against more modern forms of heating. They're not merely decorative. Oh, my grandmother remains a very practical woman, Mr. Adamant. They are highly efficient. I had not remembered her as such. She is well. I am to meet her, am I? You do not think you could come to this house and leave without her seeing you, uh, do you, Mr. Adamant? Sir Gay is bringing her up now. I must confess to feeling a trifle nervous myself. Indeed, madam. This meeting will not be easy for either of us. I am prepared, I assure you. But she is a very old woman, Mr. Adamant. And you are a friend from so long ago and unchanged. I must ask you to be careful. This meeting will be poignant for both of us, madam, but I do... Grandmama, you have a visitor. I can see that, child. That is not the hand you once kissed, Adam Adamant. But the eyes, madam. And the spirit they reflect, they are the same. Please take me to that chair. We shall not waltz through half the night as we once did. But if you would see me as I was then, regard the arena. Oh, I need no such reminder, madam. Oh, this is painful. I must see him in your eyes an obscene image of the girl you remember. On the contrary, madam, your presence is, is graced by time. Mine is due to the intervention of the devil. Evil has entered both our lives. Oh, Grandmama, you must not excite yourself. Don't fuss, child. Please sit where I can see you. Irena tells me you've come to... Catch me out. Grandmama, that's not true. <laughs> no. What she actually said was that these bankers have sent you down here to find out if I were real. Uh, I'm here purely, madam, to renew a very old and a very dear acquaintance. They have done everything possible to delay paying us the money. Well, it is a considerable sum. I am at the end of my life. I do not need it. But for Irene. Maya Daragaya Babushka. Do you have a family, Madame Natashkin? I am not married. There is still time. She's a fool to have tied herself to an old woman. Oh, Grandmama, I would never leave you. <laughs> I shall not be with you long, my child. My granddaughter has devoted her life to taking care of us. Ah, Grandmama? To you and me, I mean, not Paul. When did you leave Russia, Matt? It was in 1921. I saw then it was hopeless, hopeless. Oh, all my lost years. So much seems to have happened. Do you remember the summer that I first came to St. Petersburg? Oh, of course I remember. And the year, madam? Yes, it was 1901. I remember it well. You were so proud then. Proud? The girl. Sure you remember so long ago, over 60 years. I can see you both. 
She was tall and slim with chestnut-colored hair and eyes of fire. Louise. Yes. I can see you remember. Such memories are with us to the grave, madam. Louise. That was a summer of love. Indeed it was. We walked under the lime trees and we waltzed. And the world was changing. But we were blind. Blind to the inevitable. Even that year there were riots. And then 1905. And then that terrible war. Grandmama, you should rest. I think this is proving too much. You will forgive me. Yes, of course. I wasn't thinking. Irena is right. She's always right. I hope you will come and see me again. I would count that a great privilege, madam. Tell me, you never married? No, madam, no. What became of that girl, Louise? I would rather not discuss that, madam, but uh, I had thought. Hmm? But I had thought that you might have met her. I know. I would have remembered. I remember still I... I was jealous of her, I confess. Oh, how foolish we young can be. Oh, indeed, yes. Please come and see me again. Adam, Adam. This has been... I would like us to talk again. She is still a remarkable woman. More than you can know, child. More than you can know. Then you are convinced? Of what, mother? That my grandmother is who she claims to be. Your opinion will be of great I assistance. think you must be mistaken. Does that mean that you do not believe me? I did not come here to serve the Bank of England. I madam. see. You are snubbing me. You have no intention of being frank. Frankness does not always serve, madam. I would ask you to remember that. Oh, I was more moved. Her Highness seemed to be somewhat disturbed. Oh, well, of course. Do you think it was easy for her to be scrutinized? And that on top of everything else. What else? Oh, a delivery man came to the house and suffered a brainstorm of some sort. He abandoned his vehicle and fled. The police were here all day. I see, I'm sorry you must forgive me. My visit on top of all this must have created a great strain for her husband. Have no fear, Mr. Adamant. She will see this thing through to the bitter end. Oh, bitter, madam, surely only if you fail. Then your report will be favorable, Mr. Adamant. I am always and shall remain a highness devoted servant. I hope I may also win your devotion. I am Her Highness's heir. I am at Her Highness' command. Thank you. Madame. Mr. Adamant is leaving. Your servant, ma'am. Mr. Adam. Her Highness lives below ground, then. I beg your pardon, Well, Madame Natashkin spoke of uh, bringing her up, and yet here we are on the ground floor. Her Highness has everything she needs, sir. Thank you. take any of these documents away. I don't wish to take them away, sir. I just wish to go through them, particularly anything concerning the Grand Duchess movement since 1921. You're still not convinced, then? After meeting her, I mean. You know, I haven't made up my mind. I see. Well, I'll leave you to it. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, Sir Henry. Mr. Adamant. Oh, thank you, Henry. Mm -hmm. Ah, Adamant. 
Have you come to report? No, just to collect some further details. Details? What sort of details? Concerning the Grand Duchess claim. Look oh, here, Adam, and I thought we made our position quite clear. You want proof? Yes. Yes, of course, one way or the other. Have you met the old girl yet? Yes, yes, I have. She's the most charming lady. Yes, 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 yes. quite, but... Uh... Is she genuine? Personally, I don't believe a word of it. I mean, where's her daughter? You don't find anything about a daughter in those papers. Damn funny business. I'm quite me. sure that Adamant is capable of deciding to. One way or the other, gentlemen. Yes? Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, for you, Adamant. For me? Yeah, Adam, Adamant speaking. Hello? Mr. Adamant? I mean, sorry. What? Yes, you remember mentioning Mead Hall House? Yeah, I don't, no, but pray continue. Well, funny enough, I just read something in the paper about the same house. About a delivery man who went mad. Oh, you know. It had not escaped my attention. Well, I don't think you know what I know. I'm in the cottage hospital where they took him. Took who? The delivery man. <laughs> I told them I was from a London newspaper. Oh, what a brilliant strategy, Mr. So they wouldn't tell me anything, but I found out anyway. Listen, Mr. Adamant, the man's hair has turned white. Really? That's interesting. That's very interesting. A man of such fine-drawn sensibilities does not usually accept employment as a drayman. Oh. What was he delivering? Do you know? Bulk fuel oil. Fuel oil? Huh. In what quantity? Well, a tank of oil. Oil used to drive ships, trains and cars and heat houses? Yes, yeah, sort of course. In that case, Miss Jones, on no account, on no account are you to go anywhere near Mead Hall House. Now, do you understand? Well, I... Because, Miss Jones, Mead Hall House is not a ship. Did you say a house is not a ship? Yes, I did. The significance escapes me, Adamant. Well, don't reproach yourself, sir. It nearly did me. Gentlemen, I am absolutely certain that some infamy is afoot at Mead Hall House. Mm -hmm. I want you both to seek an appointment in that very house tomorrow morning at 11 precisely. That's all. Well, I will be one here at 11 tomorrow morning. We must have an end to this affair, gentlemen, one way or another. Tomorrow at 11.
Thank you, Papers. Huh? Thank you, Sims. Which one was Miss Jones reading? Ah, uh, this one. Sir. Yeah. Well, I had disposed of them, sir. Uh, my entry coupon for the Limerick competition. Sims, I have a task for you. Yes, sir. Tomorrow I want you to create a diversion for Miss Jones. For what purpose, sir? Well, tomorrow, Sir Henry, Sir George, and I are going down to Surrey, and on no account must Miss Jones be allowed to follow us. Is Miss ah, Jones is never expected, Sims, but if she doesn't come, you must go and find her. Yes, sir. And whatever you do, you must not let her out of your sight. No. Now, that is interesting. That's very interesting. You see, the delivery truck was abandoned at the rear of the house. Ah. Highly significant, wouldn't you say? Oh, highly, sir. Highly. Bring her up. Yes. Yes, bring her up. Yes, bring her up. And the rear of the house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see, it's an interesting proposition, Sims, because it locates things for us. Indeed so. Whatever is terrifying in that house is located in the cellar, and the Grand Duchess must be aware of it. Now, it... No. No, not it. That's it. But can it be? Can it possibly be? Can I get you something, sir? Oh, Sims, I'm haunted. That brooch, Sims, that brooch. Simplest of all possible explanations. Oh, of course. Seems I must be up early tomorrow. Early, sir? Uh, Miss Jones, sir, uh, this diversion, had you anything particular in mind? Anything you can think of, sir. Mm. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Is he awake yet? He just knew. Got in yet? No. So refused to answer. I've answered over and over. You expect us to believe the silly story about the dare? It's true. It's how it is famous. The place where that man went bonkers, and we were all talking about it about this dare. You were the one who took the dare. I told you. You don't live locally. I don't live anywhere special. Who knows you're here? Hundreds of people know all about the bushes now. Master, I had to wake you earlier than ordered. This girl, she knew who you were. <laughs> well, they're, they're wrong. I, I didn't know you. <laughs> All right. So he did. But you'll be sorry you woke up this time.
a telephone call for you, sir. Into Henry's car, sir. Make it fake, must get on. Adamant speaking. Ah, Mr. Adamant, the bank told me where to reach you. Ah, uh, Sims, what is it? Sir, pursuant to your instructions to divert Miss Jones, I understand that she didn't return home last night. The hospital porter told me that she inquired the way to Mead Hall House, sir. Heaven for that. I understand, sir, she may have gone to the house. After my expressly forbidding her to do so. Being expressly forbidden, sir, is something Miss Jones does not understand. Well, you were right to tell me, Sims. I'm afraid I fear for her safety. We must make all possible speed. Trouble, Edmund? In my day, Sir Henry, young ladies did as they were told. At his age, he really ought to know better. Well? Madame Elena sends her regrets, Your Highness, but asks that you conduct the meeting alone. How dare she? She will answer to this impertinence for the master when he wakes. However, she need not think she is indispensable. Hmm. Dear Adam, ever punctual. Admit them. I rely on you to be surprised by nothing that happens in this house today. Miss Ray, if you please. Welcome, gentlemen. Go ahead. Madam. Adam. What have you done with Miss Jones? I know of no Miss Jones. I believe she came to this house last night. Sergei, have you heard of any such person as Miss Jones? No, Your Highness. Then it would appear that I am mistaken. Your Highness. Sergei, you may serve tea. Gentlemen, be seated. Gentlemen? Well, madam, the bank's position is simple. The matter must be tested in court. Then you doubt me? Oh, that's not quite the point, Your Highness. The fact of the matter is, madam, that the bank cannot accept responsibility for making this decision. Mm -hmm. However many changes there may have been in the world, I see bankers have not. <laughs> well, it is not only a question of money, is it? There are international repercussions. It's a matter of historical import. Oh, and you do not wish a place in history. <laughs> Bankers profit from history, madam. They do not make it. I don't you see, madam, any premature announcement might cause the present Soviet government to take steps to block the payment. Oh, and you gentlemen are government agents? Madam. Adam, where are you going? I want my friends about me. I have another friend at this moment, madam, in even greater need, if you will excuse me.
He's a passionate dancer. There's a man here. I saw him in a mask. His voice? Horrible. Like a saw blade. The face. The fiend still lives. Stay close, Miss Jones. There is evil in this house. I cannot understand why nobody answers. Where is he? He? Your questions today are incomprehensible. And Irena, where is she? Edmund, have you gone mad? There's madness in this house, sir, but it is not in me. Otherwise. Louise. Hmm. So many years, and yet. Ever vulnerable, dear Adam. Go away, please, all of you. Leave us. No, please no. leave us. There's nothing here for you. But Adam. But, but she's old. Please go, please. Adam. How did you know me? The brooch. Had you forgotten it was a present from the real Grand Duchess? Oh, I always loved it. So long ago, I had forgotten. But you had not. My intervening years had been fewer, you see. This charade, this playing of the Grand Duchess, it was for him. Of course. It's over, Louise. There'll be no fortune. There will be others. Just as for him, there will be other consorts. Never. He loves me still, and when he wakes... When, Louise, he is already awake. You lie. He waits for me. Madarena, where is she? Does she still wait for you? She's a child. But she has youth. Madam, your eyes deceive you. I appear like this only to serve his purpose. Soon I shall be young again and beautiful. He promised. Well, shall we see? Will you take me to him? It will be your death, Adam. You see, he and Irena are many miles away. You would gamble your life on it? Mm. Come now. Of the question to what use could fuel oil be put in not to heat a house? Ah, I suspected a refrigeration plant such as this, the coal used to preserve evil. So that he may work. Ah! 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 Ah!
Pardon. Go to jail. You will see. With this, I shall make myself young and beautiful no, again. No. Adam, you would not stop me. You who love me and remember what I was. But don't you understand? He's planning to use your faith in him to destroy you. Just as he used my faith in you to destroy me. Adam, I belong to him. You must know what that means. Yes. Yes, I see that now for the very first time. You know, Bob, the amount of money they're talking about in today's terms would be like $14 billion. Oh. Now, 
While in that one, Adam Adamant had to deal with more of an emotional problem than we normally see him, and you must remember that a gentleman does not forget the ladies of his past, no matter how much those memories hurt. All right, next episode is Adam's mind and body that are put to the test in a sinister sort of service. This episode was directed by Lawrence Bourne, and he worked on things like Mystery and Imagination, Armchair Theater, and The Avengers, you know, the one without Captain America. Now, he left the building in 2012, and he came to us from Hertfordshire, England. This was written by Tony Williamson, who also worked on The Avengers, and Department S, and Secret Agent, which of course starred Patrick McGowan. He comes to us from Manchester, Lancashire, England. Manchester, England, England. Love that song. But sadly left us in 91. Uh, he was known for writing scripts that involved supercomputers and all the problems that come with that. Remember, that was a big boogeyman in the 60s. Now, at one point, he was a dentist and a pilot in the RAF uh, before becoming a writer, and he has a writing partner by the name of Dennis Spooner, and I imagine they have a very interesting relationship, because Spooner was also a pilot in the RAF, and he had to remove a tooth from him without anesthetic once. I wonder how often that comes up in conversation. This is also written by Dick Vosberg, as always, as well as our usual cast of characters that we also have in the part of Jason Lang, T.P. McKenna. Now, he was in the 1971 movie Straw Dogs and the 2004 Walking Dead series. But I will remember him best from the Lovejoy TV series, which I enjoyed very much. Now, he came to us all the way from Malagu County Caravan, Ireland, which I'm probably mispronouncing. And he started off his long and glorious career on the stage in a production of Tennessee uh, Williams' Summer and Smoke back in 1954. He is considered one of the greats of character acting in the UK. He was nearly chosen as the High Priest Rankin in the Doctor Who Power of the Crawl, he was also highly considered for the chief caretaker in the Doctor Who The Paradise Tower series. And he was considered for several parts in our favorite Naked Lady sci-fi movie, Life Force. Except for the Naked Lady. Or maybe he was, I don't know. That would have been really weird. <laughs> now, in one part of this, he talks about opening up the widow. And what he actually means is he's opening a bottle of very expensive champagne, a particular brand. Now, as I pointed out, one of the writers likes to write about things like the master computer. And I have to wonder, uh, in this episode, no matter how good a security service you are, you would probably not be wearing a black uniform or doing one-handed salutes. And even if the initials of your company were S and S, you would not put those letters on a black uniform in lapels. Not in England in the 60s, certainly. I wonder if he was trying to make a connection between the master computer and a master race. You watch it decide for yourself in Adam Adamant and a sinister sort of service. And yes, Bob, even back then, a supercomputer would not have opened an email from a Nigerian prince unlike you. Just a quick reminder, you can find me on Roku in multiple places, including Other Worlds TV, which is an excellent place to watch horror and sci-fi. And if you're local, you can see me on KORK Cork TV. And of course, you can also see me at Creature Features Network, which you can download to your phone. And all the new shows are dubbed so you can watch horror alone at night without bothering anyone. <laughs> I 
the knight in white armor. Cold as a shot from a gun. Miss Jones, that's the third false alarm. Shh! It was you. I heard the lift doors open. But they are designed to close as well. You know. you know what I mean. There! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday! You should run out of candles at this rate. Uh, I'm so sorry, Sir Nigel. We were rather expecting Mr. Adam. Rather expecting him myself, as a matter of fact. Chess night, you know. Chess? Ah, yes, sir, your monthly duel. I'm afraid Mr. Adamant is rather late. But on his birthday? Not engaged on some investigation? Not that I know of, sir, no. Ah, in that case, I'll wait. A glass of sherry. Uh, whiskey, thank you. Undiluted. It's a very important occasion, you know, Mr. Adamant's birthday. Getting on a bit with that sort of thing, isn't he? Can't say I bother myself. Oh, you will when you get to his age. What? Don't quite follow, my dear. One hundred? Today. The Somerset House acknowledged it this morning, sir. And the palace. Good Lord. I didn't even send a card. <laughs> You'll be tickled pink when you get this one. Uh. Uh -uh. The Queen is much interested to hear that you're celebrating your 100th birthday and sends you warm congratulations and good wishes. <laughs> How very nice. Mr. Adam! Oh. This was supposed to be a surprise. My dear Miss Jones, my own birthday has failed to surprise me since the age of two. Sir Nigel, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I had an appointment with my doctor. Oh, not sick, I hope. Oh, no, no, no. We fence every week at the gymnasium. What on earth is this? Your cake, sir. My cake? It was Miss Jones's idea, but happily I managed to persuade her not to bake it herself. How thoughtful of you. Of both of you, of course. Now you have to blow out the candles and make a wish. A wish? And should you happen to be looking at Miss Jones at the time, sir? Sims, you're being horrible tonight. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> you're the nicest hundred-year-old I know. All the best, sir. Congratulations, old chap. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, Sims, I think this calls for a bottle of the widow, don't you? I took the liberty, sir, of putting one on ice. Well, get it out, man. Oh. Get it out. I'll get the glass. And now, Sir Nigel, to the chessboard, eh? Splendid, splendid. You've, uh... You've read the evening paper? Yes, yes, I have. I, I was rather worried by that robbery of the bullion vehicle. Worried? It's driving me up the wall. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can tell you the whole secretary is getting a bit hot, hot under the collar. Still not to talk sharp, eh? <laughs> First rule of the game. Your call, I believe. Ah, ah, uh, that one. Ah. Here we are then. 
Fearless, bold and ubiquitous. Ah, Mr. Adamant, long may he stick with us. Mm. Jolly good, Sims. Jolly good. Ah. <laughs> Unit four, in area now. Unit three, on time. Unit five, approaching building and on schedule. Unit one, in area now. Unit four in position. That's mate in four, I think. What? But how the devil did you? Oh, at last. Afraid I've easy meat tonight, Adamant. If your mind doesn't appear to be on the game, Sir Nigel. No, perhaps you're right. Oh, well. Has today's robbery anything to do with it? Yes, I think so. You know, the trouble with us civil servants is that we're not supposed to detect crime, just object to excessive amounts of it. And there has been an increase. In quantity, no, but in, in quality, there certainly has. Today's hold-up was a perfect example. You throw a six, Miss Jones. The yard haven't the slightest idea who's responsible, not an inkling. Well, that's hardly surprising. 78% of crimes go unsolved. Yes, and it looks like being a damn sight more. Do you realize, Adamant, that in the past two weeks, over 90% of the crimes committed in the West End revealed no clues, no witnesses, not even fingerprints. They involved things like Gas, knockout drops, smoke bombs, grenades, and high-powered cutting torches. Well, that's unusual. Hmm. Baffling. They seem to move in and out like clockwork. Not a trace left. On schedule, moving out in 30 seconds. There's a distinct pattern to all this, you know. I don't mind admitting it scares the living daylights out of me. Uh, Mr. Adamant's residence. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, one moment, please. Uh, for you, Sir Nigel. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Yes? What? But that's impossible. How many? All right, you better get hold of your art chiefs. Yes, I'll come immediately. Sorry, Adam. I'm afraid I'll have to get back to Whitehall at once. Yes, of course. Sent another robbery. One like this morning would have been bad enough. But no, no. They have to pull six. Six? Only a few minutes ago, no less than six crimes were committed simultaneously in the city. This is war, Adam. Outright war. But of course, I can't possibly allow you to involve yourself in this. And I can't possibly allow myself to sit idly by. Good night, sir. Good night. I know it'll be far from good for me. Right then. Where do we start? I start, Miss Jones, by sending you to the comfort of your home. But, Mr. Adamant, you're going to need help. Mr. Jones. Between the three of us. Good night. Uh, your scooter awaits in the garage, Miss Jones. Sonk. Oh, Miss Jones. Thank you for my birthday. Don't mention it. Uh, this uh, seems rather a tricky one, sir. Where on earth does one look for someone's private army? On the battlefield, Sims. Where else?
morning. I, uh, I gather there's been an accident. <laughs> Everything's gone. The diamond solitaire, the emerald pendant, the ruby and sapphire cluster, all gone. Some of those pieces have been here since I was a boy, sir. Uh, really, I'm terribly sorry. I've dusted this tray for nearly 30 years. But you were insured. Oh, it's the sentimental value you never recover, sir. We shall have to fill the place with all this modern stuff. It just won't be the same. Yes. Yes, I was hoping that you, um, you could make a piece of jewellery for me. I have the stones, of course, and also the design. That's what I suppose, sir, sir. It'll, it'll be some weeks before we're sorted out, though. Well, perhaps I could leave the stones here, providing, of course, that they are safe. Hmm? Oh, well, they're not likely to come back now, are they? I told Mr. Jade that we needed those new alarms. Told him a dozen times I did. What new alarms? Well, the ones we needed. We'd been told that our alarms were out of date. I see. I see. Who told you? Was it someone here? Someone in your employ? Oh, no, no, no. An expert. Uh, one of these uh, security firms, they wanted to install a modern system with electronic eyes and everything. Mm. And how did they know that you needed these new alarms? Well, it's their job to know, isn't it, sir? Uh, they sent down a real expert to look at everything, and he told Mr. Jade that it was too old. But he didn't listen. Of course, he never does. Perhaps I ought to take my stones to a, well, a more security-minded firm. Oh, we shall have a modern system now, sir. Now that the horse has gone, so to speak. Would you mind terribly if I spoke to the security service? You see, these stones are very valuable or perhaps his his reassurance oh yes of course sir I, I i shouldn't mind in the least um surveillance services is the name of the firm sir you see them a lot around london indeed thank you thank you very much indeed s cars the one eight and one nine will operate on random patrol covering the west end and financial districts the radios will be tuned to channel D, and I expect immediate alert at any sign of trouble in your areas. The remainder of the S cars will patrol the regularly assigned areas, keeping channel D open at all times. Final briefing will be at 1800 hours. Dismiss. Impressive, Mr. Lang. I, I'd no idea. Of course you hadn't. Security is our business, Mr. Adamant. There's no point in trotting around like glorified traffic wardens. Indeed not. No. Every man on our strength is a highly trained, highly disciplined fighting machine. With a private army? In a private war. These are vicious days, Adamant. Commercial interests subjected to espionage, intimidation, extortion, assault, robbery. We'll fight. If necessary, kill. But surely, if you uh, if you are not allowed to carry arms, we don't need arms, just hands. Hands. Come, my friend. I will show you. No, please. You watch. The breathing. It is very important. You see, the breathing is most important. Well, not it seems for the dummy. <laughs> if you see what I mean. <laughs> if it was a man, he would be dead. Mm, unless, of course, he had the foresight to move out of the way. <laughs> Miklo, this is Adam Adamant. At the moment, a guest, but perhaps soon. A colleague? Have you done the karate? Hmm? Uh, no. No, I've never had the inclination. I've always found that the art of fisticuffs has served me quite well. Fisticuffs? Yes. Boxing man. Fist! I should be careful with Niklo if I were you. He's really quite deadly. Trains all our men. Now you try.
You know, I think not. I find it highly unlikely that I shall ever be attacked by a piece of board. In here, Mr. Edmund, is our broadest position. The crime computer. Remarkable. Not only can we analyze security systems, we can predict the probability of an actual crime. Who was that? Prevention, of course. But allow me to introduce Miss Sandra Vero in charge of the computer, Miss Vero. This is Mr. Adamant. Your servant, madam. How do you do? Mr. Adamant is studying modern security methods. Perhaps he would like uh, a demonstration. Well, I should be delighted. Delighted. I shall be in the operations room then. Well, this is one of the more advanced self-programming computers. Mm. Apart from the basic information stored in its memory tapes, it is constantly collecting new information on crimes and security. Even our conversation is being monitored, assessed, and then filed for future reference. Well, well I'm afraid I, I find it all quite baffling. Sir, the adamant situation is confusing some of the men. Confused? Why should my orders confuse? The security precaution, sir. You said yourself, no one was to be allowed to Are go in. Are you questioning my judgment? Oh, no, sir. But he has a certain reputation. A reputation for being old-fashioned, out of touch, insufficiently and stupidly courageous. None of these qualities concerns or confuses me. You will instruct the men to give Adamant every freedom. He says he is interested in modern methods. Well, let him look. Let him see that my organization is the ultimate in efficiency. Sir, yeah, like a child. Let him play. Sir! Well, it's really quite simple. At any time of the day or night, the computer can predict the probability of a crime involving one of our clients. Do you know, I find it rather sad that a mere machine can foresee our destiny. Tell me this, Miss Merrill. Are we all so predictable? I should think the computer would find it difficult to predict your actions, Mr. Adams. I sincerely hope so, ma'am. Unless, of course, we had more information. On your motive for being here, for instance. It seems unlikely that it is purely uh, academic. Certainly not. Now that I've seen some of your operation, I think I can say in confidence that I'm here to inspect your organization. By whom were you asked? A group of bankers have decided to supplement their security organization with a service such as yours. The question is, of course, are you the best? We think so. However, if someone like yourself were to join us, give us the benefit of your experience, your, uh, your knowledge of criminals. I don't think I could compete with your electronic guardian. Then don't compete, Mr. Adamant. Unite. It's an interesting proposition. Would I be able to make use of your computer? In any way you wish. Correct, Miss Leno? Certainly. But you've hardly said it's a challenge so far, Mr. Adam. <laughs> true, true. Perhaps I should be a little more specific. Anything at all? Subject, robbery, time, night, place, London, item, jewelry, firm, Jade, parquet, and with it. Yes, the point. I think your computer might. That firm was the subject of a robbery only last night. Remarkable. A complete list of the firm's security arrangements. Well, why not? All our clients file full details with it. So Jade, Parker and Withy are your clients? That would appear to be obvious, Mr. Adamant. Miss Farrell, I'm sure that our guest would wish to see how the information is received. Of course. This way, Mr. Adamant. Thank you. Thank you very much. The 
request analysis and recommendations. Subject, Adam Adamant. <laughs> say where he was going? Cross my heart and hope you'll die. If I thought you meant that, I would leave at once. But of course you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Adamant's resident. Sims, Sims, will you listen carefully? I've very little time. I want you to go out this afternoon and buy a fur coat. A fur coat? Possibly without the assistance of Miss Jones. I shall inform her as to your wishes, now. Now, Sims, I want you to buy it from the furriers that was the subject of the robbery last night. And while you're there, I want you to make some inquiries. I want you to find out whether they have had any dealings with a security service known as Surveillance Services Limited. Is that clear? No, moderately, sir. All right, Sims, I shall be wearing my dark blue herringbone. But he hasn't got a dark blue herringbone. Then, obviously, somebody must have interrupted him. Well, he must be at that... Surveillance services. You weren't supposed to be listening. Oh, I can't help it if I've got sharp ears. And a very long nose, Hobbit. Sims, that's not the way to talk to someone, now. I have absolutely no intention of taking you to the furriers. All right. But you're going to look a bit silly buying a fur coat for yourself. Now, if I was with you, you could say I was your daughter. Oh, what a horrifying thought. Hour 11, the control. Have delivered salary payments, did it be engineering. I'm now proceeding to Martin's supermarkets for collection duty. Out. Control to car 29. Your bank delivery completed. No further instructions. Return to base. Out. Well, then, I admit, what do you make of us? Well, I think it's a most efficient operation. It seems to me just as well that you are on the side of law and order. There are quite a few inside Her Majesty's prisons that wouldn't agree with you, Mr. Adamant. Wouldn't agree at all. Perhaps because you, for your organization, crime does pay. I suppose you could say that. Now for my proposition. Join us on your own terms. Advisory capacity, if you wish, well? I think so. I think it might prove most informative. There is one formality. You would have to, uh, to take certain tests before being completely acceptable. Tests? What sort of tests? Physical fitness, your ability to defend yourself, moral fiber. The ability to uh, back up words with actions. I'm at your service. Splendid. We have a gymnasium at the rear of the premises. One of my men will show you the way. You won't be there. No, no. Yes. Miklo prefers to uh, handle these matters personally. Ah, yes. Yes, Miklo, your karate expert. Mm. The test is quite voluntary. Mm. We even have a release which we ask you to sign. Then perhaps I'd better sign it, Mr. Lamb. the gentleman wish to see something in me? A silver fox will do. Oh, I've always wanted a mink skull. <laughs> oh, yes. So oh, it does suit the young lady. My daughter's more suited to fox. Oh, yes, I am. Your daughter. Mm. Isn't it super, Daddy? Put it back, daughter. Or send by to slaughter. Put it back, my dear. Fox. <laughs> yes, of course. Unfortunately, most of our stock went in the robbery last night, but we are hoping to have a range of black and silver fox in by tomorrow. Oh, you were robbed, were you? I thought these places were full of alarms and things. <laughs> yes, well, so did we, sir. I must introduce you to a friend of mine. He runs one of these security firms, well up on alarms, on photoelectric or whatnot. Oh, really? Yes, surveillance services, it's called. Perhaps you know it. Surveillance services? Oh. Yes, I believe I do. Black uniforms. Uh, yes, it's right. Yes, of course, they were here last month. Offered us various types of security, but all rather pricey, mm. I'm afraid. But you couldn't afford it, wasn't it? 
And I'll just see if we have anything similar to the Fox Ranch, a medium priced, of course. Yeah. Clarence in. Looks as if Mr. Adamant's on the right track, doesn't it? And I shall be lumped over the first toe. Or even the first coat. How do I look, Daddy? Oh, yes, yes. madam, that is so you. Yeah. Come in, Mr. Edmund. Come in. We're all ready for you, little guest. Three of our more advanced students. So I see. And the test? Survival. That is all. Survival. is not all. That was just a little game. And now, and now, Mr. Adamant, you're going to die. <laughs> Jason. No longer than usual, Miss Farrow. Most of the cars seem to be in. Mr. Bart, have we any profound thoughts from the computer? Fast asleep. Has Mr. Adamant left, by the way? I really haven't the faintest idea. I was just about to leave, as a matter of fact. You seem surprised, Mr. Lyne. Of course not. My dear Miss Verrill, you seem about to leave yourself. Eight hours is long enough with a computer. I'm delighted to hear you say that. I wonder if I may offer you a lift. Well, there are still many questions I'd like to ask you about your electronic wizard. Thank you. I'd be delighted. Good night. Oh, Mr. Lamb. That uh, signed release from McClough. I think you may need it. <laughs> Sorts of questions. Get rid of him! You wanted to ask about my computer. Yes. Yes, tell me, what is its power source? The usual electricity. But don't you need an isolated power source to prevent the fluctuations in current? Oh, not really. There are built-in stabilizers to take care of. Ah, yes. Yes, I see stabilizers. And tell me this, did I not see some rather heavy cables that were going from the machine through the wall of your office. Oh, well, it's the electricity main. There's also a special safety circuit. I see, I see. Could it possibly be operated from elsewhere? 
It's possible. But I'd be bound to know. All the controls for it are in my office. I see. Thank you. You've been most helpful. I don't see how. Perhaps that's just as well, my dear. Now, would it be very predictable if I asked you to die? Not predictable, but most acceptable. Excellent. Waiter, my reckoning. Oh, then this isn't the YHA. Where am I then? Trouble. That's where you are. Right in the middle of trouble, Miss Jones. Sir Nigel D, sir. Morning, Adam. Sorry to barge in like this on my way to the office. Morning, Sir Nigel. You'll take a cup of coffee or a glass of champagne? Oh, thank you. I won't say no. Mm. Ah, kidneys and bacon, eh? Can't eat the old-fashioned breakfast. Well, why don't you join me? Ah, oh, thank you. Wish I could, but duty calls. Fact is, I'm due at a rather tricky meeting with the minister in about oh. an hour. Over this blasted crime wave. Well, we haven't a clue, and he's bound to ask about leads and suspects. Oh, thank no. you. The problem is, we've nothing at all to give him. I, um... Uh, I suppose you haven't turned anything up, eh? Well, as a matter of fact, I have. Yeah. You have? Yes, I think I found their headquarters. Ah, dear fellow, how splendid! Why didn't you say that? Well, so I delighted. only think that I have no proof. Oh, but surely a word in confidence, eh? No, no, no. To move now would be utterly disastrous. Yes. Yes, perhaps you're right. Sims, I'm uh, rather puzzled by this count. Uh, which account would that be, sir? It's for a fur coat. For a beaver lamb, and it's charged to me. Oh, yes, sir, that is from Miss Jones. My dear Sims, I'm not in the habit of buying fur coats for your... Uh, yesterday, sir, you told me to go to the furriers. I, I did, too. Uh, yes. To Miss Jones? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, she, uh, she chose the beaver lamb, sir, instead of the mink. <laughs> it's, um, it's merely a matter of business. Sir Nigel, just a matter of business. Oh, sure. yes, of course, my dear fellow. The most attractive young girl. <clears throat> that will be all. Yes, Sims, right? that will be all. Thank you Thank very you. much. Well, I must be off. You'll, uh, you'll call me when you have anything, eh? Without a moment's delay. Sir Appreciate it, Adam. Uh, oh, by the way, my regards to Miss Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, I was beginning to think you weren't coming. I was unavoidably delayed, ma'am. Anything wrong? This is very little time. But I'm afraid I must ask you to leave here immediately. What? But I couldn't do that. All the routes and schedules have to be constantly analysed by the computer. Did it never occur to you, madam, that a machine that can predict crime can also plan crime? <laughs> That's ridiculous. No, I'm afraid it isn't. Am I right in assuming that the machine was Mr. Lang's idea? I suppose so. Naturally, I wasn't here then, but I don't understand what you're talking about. I'm afraid, ma'am, this machine is being used to plan a war of crime. No, no, you're wrong, Adam. And the very fact that you are working with it places you in the gravest danger, madam. Look, I know you mean well, but what you're saying is impossible. Unless you suspect me of being <laughs> the evil genius. Of course not, of course not. Wow. Did you not tell me yesterday that this machine could possibly be operated from elsewhere? I also said it was most unlikely. Yes, but it is possible. That's emergency switch. Now, what emergencies could you possibly have? Well, it might be necessary to uh, disconnect the circuit, switch off the main power. But you have ordinary switches for that matter. No, don't touch it. I'm not allowed to touch it. You can give us that. I will take full responsibility, I assure you. <laughs> Still 
So it is your villainy behind all this. I don't want to shoot you, Adam, dear. But if you damage the computer, I will kill you. Oh, Miss Phil. I tried to stop you. Oh, my poor child. Are there no limits to your machinations? Evil sets its own boundaries, Adamant. A fact which you will soon appreciate. Do I suggest that you put that pistol down, madam? Do as he says, my dear. What trickery is this? No trick. At long last, Adamant, I am the means to bring you into my select <laughs> gathering. You delude yourself, sir. Not when I have... Miss Jones. You lie! I can assure you he does not. Your charming little friend made the mistake of breaking in here last night. Unfortunately, we are unable to show our gratitude. Unless you agree to my terms. Oh, you fiend. Darius, Adam, with your strength, we will be indestructible. What terms? Tonight, you will carry out our most ambitious robbery. If you fail, Miss Jones will die. You can't keep me locked up like this. You wait till Mr. Adam... Try again, dear. Adamant's been here all day. You can bring him in now. Sit down, Adamant. You know, if I may say so, this is all quite unnecessary. Of course, but I never discourage efficiency. Sit down. You wanted to know all about this, Adamant? Well, so you shall. Surveillance services have just completed another successful day. Now it begins the more lucrative side of its operations. You have the computer's recommendations, Miss Errol. Yes. Excellent. With these, Adamant, we can never fail. Every crime planned to last detail. Every step analyzed by computer. Its probability of success projected to impossible odds. You're not the only one with a computer, you know. The police, undermanned, under-equipped, try to, ass to assess an entire city. All we have to do is compute their weaknesses, and they are many. And yours? None. Civilian services. Mr. Adam Um, who is that speaking, please? So Mr. William Simmons says it's urgent. Mr. Adamant has left. Mr. Simmons? Mr. Adamant has just left. No, I'm sorry, he... Hold on a moment, please. He says that Mr. Adamant couldn't have left. Who is this man, Simms? My valet. He knows I haven't left because I haven't telephoned him about dinner. He does know my habits very well. Excuse me. Mr. Sims, we are seeing if we can locate Mr. Adamant for you. Being a new member of our organization, he does not yet have his own hmm. office. That is correct, Mr. Sims. Mr. Adamant joined us today. Ah, here he comes. Answer it. But if there is one wrong word, I promise you, both you and Miss Jones will die. Hello, Sims? Yes, I'm sorry to bother you just now. I'm afraid, Sims, I shan't be home for dinner. Oh, no, I wasn't calling about that. It's Miss Jones. I'm sure the pheasant will be delicious, Sims, but you'll have to eat it yourself. I'm awfully sorry, but he does get a little temperamental. And then you probably know, sir, Miss Jones has disappeared. Completely, Sims. I'm afraid you'll have to deliver that little gift yourself. Gift, sir? What gift? 
Oh, come along, Sims. You remember, you bought it yourself. Ah, the first toll. Yes, that's right. Would you make sure to deliver it by midnight? But, sir, I don't know where Miss Jones is. Oh, come along, Sims. It's not very difficult. You have the telephone number. I know the telephone number. Surveillance services. Surveillance services? Switch to channel D. This is SS Control. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. This is SS Control. Cars 1, 2, 4, and 6. Prepare for diversionary tactics. Car number 1. You will be responsible for the fire in Upper Grafton Street. Car number 2. Activate alarms at all banks and areas G4, C2. Cars 4 and 6, proceed to areas J9, B5. Carry out robberies as planned. 0R, 2200, over and out. <laughs> Good man. Police activity in J9B5. All bank alarms activated. You know you'll pay dearly for this. After tonight, we can afford to. And I took a real target of tonight's little exercise. Pay attention, Edmund. A great deal depends on our success. Or do you refuse? No. Where is it? I think we shall have to call you Sir Lancelot, huh? Where is it? Covent Garden, House of Van Meer, one of the biggest jewel merchants in the world. Five million pounds, Adam. <laughs> That's how much it's worth. service, you horrible little wretch. All right, Edmund. It's all yours now. Down to the basement. Smile, please. Thank you. Second delay. Touch it before, and every blue helmet in London will know. The best thing we can do is to get out of here. 
Mr. Adam is helping with the robbery. He'll be in terrible trouble. Well, if you haven't walked in like your red riding hood. We've got to warn you, Sims. How, may I ask? And if that woman's the only one in there, we knock her out and use, and, and use the radio. Such blood-curdling simplicity. You knocked out my guard. I have an aversion to striking women. Present company accepted. Well, I haven't come on this. Over here, Miss Jones. Why did I listen to you? All right, Edmund. The privilege is all yours. You may open the vault door. Miss Jones. Through there. Go on. Navigate the door. Head to it. Go on, or I'll use this. Why has there been no report? There's been no word. I'm afraid, my dear. Adamant may have acted against us. We can't be sure. I am sure. Kill the girl. But they may just have been delayed. I said kill the girl. Ah! I can't. Of course you can't, Miss Farrell. You. The others. I'm afraid they've been delayed until morning. That is the next time they open the vault. Adam, Adam. <coughs> next time, there will be no quarter. Where are you? Ah, where you can never reach me. Will you never have the courage to meet me face to face? When next we meet, it will be on my terms, in my time, and on my ground. And there will be no escape. Ah! So much for your perfect crime machine, Miss Earl. I fear you'll have many years in which to contemplate its imperfection. Sims, would you take it to the car? Well, I solve another great problem. What problem, The Sam mysterious is? problem of them all, Miss Jones. Subject for analysis, Miss Georgina Jones. Uh -huh. Characteristics, undisciplined, careless, persistent, subversive. Subversive? Solution, please. <laughs> Kindly carry out the machine's instructions, Miss Jones. <laughs> Miss Jones should be eliminated immediately. Drop dead. Leave this man 
I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. I know that I always enjoy watching Adam Adamant, and I truly hope they bring it back with the right actor. And if you've been watching the show, you know who I'm talking about. I may bump into them at a convention at some point, and I will be putting a word in their ear. Who knows, maybe old Al will wind up getting a cameo somewhere. I wonder if I could be Sims. Ooh. I have to work on my limericks. Well, that's our show for tonight. Join us next week when who knows what we have, because we don't know. We never do. But until then, remember to wash your hands like you've just murdered the rightful king, and that he's Bob, I'm Al, and we'll see you at the movies. Bob wants to remind you that if 007 is the world's most famous spy, doesn't it also make him the world's worst spy? Well, maybe not. He keeps changing his face just like Doctor Who, so maybe it still works. <laughs>